My name is Tom Cruise. I'm the Digital Media Manager with FSU Libraries. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to record decent video and audio from the comfort of your own home. Now, there's a lot of people who think that you need thousands of dollars of equipment and a whole team of professionals in order to create high quality, uh, professional looking video. Okay, so sometimes that's true, but you can really create uh, decent video, which is what we'll be shooting for in this tutorial, with just the help of your iPhone or your Android phone or your tablet or even the webcam on your computer. We'll be covering a few topics today, including planning your project, how to capture decent video, and how to capture decent audio. Before you even hit record, it's good to have a plan of exactly what you plan on capturing and what your video is going to be about. So it might be good to start off with an outline or a script. In fact, linked in the description below, I'll be putting down a script outline that tends to help myself and others uh, when it comes to planning your video project. It goes over such details as what is the objective of your overall video? Who are you trying to communicate with? What kinds of uh, footage do you need to record? How much of it is voiceover? How much of it features uh, your actual face, for instance? And what kinds of B-roll or supporting footage uh, do you need to capture? It's good to have these things in mind ahead of time so that you don't end up sitting down to edit your footage and thinking, oh no, now I've got to go back to uh, this very special setup and record video that I need after the fact. Another mantra to live by is to be flexible. Sometimes your ambitions can be just that, ambitious. And there are things that we can't always control, especially in a circumstance when we may be stuck to just a few different locations. So remember that you can still accomplish your objectives and your goals, even with limited equipment or opportunity. In fact, working within a limitation is a skill unto itself, and hopefully that's something valuable that you can take away either from this tutorial or just from practice. A part of planning your video is knowing where it's going to be published, what kind of audience are you considering. So you might be used to seeing something like this, where we're filming vertical video. You also have your horizontal orientation like we are right now. This is your typical widescreen format that you might be used to seeing on say a computer monitor or a television. Again, when it comes to where you're publishing, this might be also the most uh, appropriate way to record. And you wanna keep that consistent. So be sure to have these things in mind, say in your planning document, and you'll be able to accomplish that decent quality that you're looking for. Hi there, quick intermission from future editing Tom. You may notice in the next few clips that I'm gonna sound a little bit different and that's because I'm using uh, just the microphone on my phone. See, previously I was using what's called a lavalier microphone and that's gonna give you a slightly different uh, audio quality compared to what you'll hear soon, which is just the microphone uh, on my mobile phone. Uh, so you'll notice that difference, but hopefully this provides an example of the kinds of judgment calls you can make once you're done with your recording. Is it worth it to go back and re-record something that you know, might be a little different or doesn't quite reach up to uh, the standards that you're looking for. In the pursuit of decent, I went ahead and decided to keep these clips. Now, with that, back to the video. Now, holding your phone up to your face uh, may be effective for the particular project that you have in mind, but sometimes moving around uh, or having your background change, unless it's directly relevant to what you're talking about, can be a little bit distracting. Uh, personally, where possible, I prefer to have my camera, whatever it might be, uh, stationary in just one spot. So in this case, I'm using a, uh, not quite a tripod, but basically a phone mount that allows me to orient my phone, horizontal or vertical. If you're not having to put your energy toward holding up your camera, trying to hold it steady, especially for someone like me who actually has pretty shaky hands and can sometimes have difficulty when it comes to getting steady video. Now, if you don't have any kind of a phone mount, there's still options available to you. You could always prop your phone up against a book or put it on a shelf. Just be resourceful, like we talked about earlier. Be flexible, and you can still find a similar solution for yourself. Your next consideration is going to be trying to find a place where you can get good lighting. Now, good lighting is going to be relatively subjective, but oftentimes uh, the biggest difference 
uh, is going to be whether or not you have what's called uh, diffuse or directional light. Now, what I've been able to accomplish here is called diffuse light, which means that you're not going to see very harsh shadows. It's relatively uh, even and soft. What I've done is I've merely placed my camera between me and an outside window. We sometimes have limited control uh, over these circumstances. So uh, if the sun is gonna be covered by clouds, and that means sometimes it might be a little bit dimmer, or you know sometimes it might be a little brighter. And these things can be okay. We can sometimes get in the habit of being a bit uh, overly analytical about exactly what our video looks like or, or what it sounds like. And it's really okay to roll with these sorts of things. Your, your audience is much more focused on what you're talking about. Unless, of course, in this clip you decided to start noticing these tiny differences because I'm talking about them right now. As a for instance, this is a bad shot. Uh, the main source of light is behind me. This shot could be best used if, say, you were in an interview uh, as maybe a protected witness and you didn't want to know my identity, this is probably a great way to go about that. But uh, you can do something simple uh, such as you know, tapping on the subject uh, that you're speaking to. Typically on your phone, this means that it will autofocus as well as fix the exposure uh, or the lighting based off of the focus of your video. Uh, this is a little bit better, uh, but it's not quite ideal. We want to consider the position of our light. Uh, in this case, I am right next to my window and we have an example of some harsh lighting. We literally have the blinds casting shadows on my face. Uh, half of my face is under a pretty dark shadow. Uh, whereas a simple difference like putting the window in front of me while not quite as bright allows a bit more of an even presentation of what's on my face. You can spend less time thinking about uh, the shades, well, you know, shading my face and uh, more about what I might be saying. Now, I won't be getting too much into the detail of uh, having very artistic composition, but composition is important. And generally, this is the way that you're orienting the subjects in your video. So for this presentation, I have myself relatively in the center, making eye contact with the lens of my phone and just making sure that I am the focus uh, of this current shot, which, you know, since I am presenting information to you is generally what you want to stick to. Now, many of us are stuck at home at the moment. We don't have a professional studio, so it's really okay to make do with what your background's going to be. I happen to have a window here that allows me some decent, even lighting. In fact, I would call this indirect lighting because unlike the example earlier, I'm not being lit directly by the sunlight coming in. Instead, I'm using the indirect light in order to get a relatively uh, soft lighting situation on my face here. As far as my background is concerned, we can consider it relatively plain. You know, there's uh, some features to be had back here, but it's not really going to be the focus, and hopefully it's not something terribly distracting. So generally speaking, you kind of just want to keep in mind the location. Why did you choose this location? What are the, the benefits of being here, and is it ideal for what you're trying to communicate? Is there something distracting in the shot that people might be uh, more inclined to pay attention to besides you? Uh, is the lighting going to create any sort of distracting effect, whether that is uh, for you or your audience? Uh, and how comfortable are you being able to present? Now, the next consideration that we'll have is audio. Where you choose to record is going to have a pretty big effect, uh, not only on how your video looks, but also how it sounds. So, uh, you know, there is the visual component to consider, but probably, arguably most important is going to be audio. Now, I happen uh, to be fortunate enough to actually be using what's called a lapel mic. Now, being outdoors, it might... Sorry, there are squirrels over there. But it could cause issues like whether or not uh, wind is hitting your mic and whether or not you're using your phone or a lapel mic, uh, this can have an effect. So for the next few shots, I'm going to be recording without a lapel mic. When I'm just using the mic on my cell phone, this is what it's going to sound like. Now, right now I'm outside. It's lightly windy, not too bad. Now I'm between two walls here and you might start to hear what's called reverb. Basically, that's the sound of my voice starting to bounce off of surfaces nearby. Uh, the location that you choose is going to have an effect on that as well. Now, we're also going to be subject to uh, everything that is outside. So we can hear some folks 
uh, doing yard work, and while it does actually feel uh, nice, crispy, and cool outside, it might not be ideal for capturing the cleanest audio. Uh, and sometimes we just don't have a lot of control over that. So if you know the landscapers decide to come in and bless them, they're just doing their job, sometimes we can just talk a little bit louder. And that's just the best that we can do. You want to take just as careful consideration for your recording environment. Uh, it's good sometimes to find a quiet and private place to be able to record your video, but if you choose some place like, say, your restroom, you can probably tell right away, hmm, this person is recording in a restroom. What we get here is relative privacy. You're not going to hear uh, many things. Maybe there's a little bit of reverb. Uh, which we discussed earlier, that's the sound bouncing off of your walls. And maybe this is a little bit sacrilegious for someone who mostly deals in video, but audio, more often than not, can be the most important part of video. Even if, say, the video were to cut out, or even if the video looks not so good, what's most important is that you're able to convey your message to your audience, and that's going to be through audio. Hear me out in a very literal way. Sometimes uh, you might not necessarily have the most uh, professional setup when it comes to audio, but you might have access to a very simple form of uh, Audio Studio right in your home. It just takes a matter of being uh, resourceful. And that can be accomplished by, say, going in your closet and lining it with a blanket, or even just your clothes around you. You don't necessarily need a walk-in, but enough space to, say, cover about three sides around you. Now, right now I'm facing into the room, but if I turn around and face into the closet, it might reduce the intensity that my voice is going to bounce back at me. And that's because my voice isn't bouncing back into the mic not nearly as much as sitting in the corner of a room where I have two solid walls in front of me. Other things to consider when it comes to finding a location to record in your home is, are you near something like an AC unit? Uh, for instance, is the mail truck going to be coming around this time of day? While you might not necessarily have full control over your space, uh, there's always things that you can consider or you might just be able to intuit based off of what's in your environment. Something as simple as being aware of how your voice is going to interact with the space around you and being able to find ways to control that is pretty available to you without necessarily needing a big fancy recording studio. Remember, what we're shooting for is decent. And so all that matters is that the audio is decent. You can hear me, you can clearly understand me. We've accomplished what we set out to do.